Hi, everybody. This is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology, and these are your sun and rising sign horoscopes for the month of December 2019. In this video, we're going to take a look at the water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces, starting with Cancer. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. <clears throat> now, the big transit for the month is Jupiter's entrance into the sign of Capricorn, but Jupiter is also going to make a trine to Uranus. There is also a new moon solar eclipse around Christmas time that is conjoined with uh, the planet Jupiter and also trine to Uranus. So it is a big month of transits coming through your seventh house, and that is the house of relationships. If you're a Cancer rising, there are big changes happening, expansion and growth for a partner. You might be meeting somebody new. You could be getting married or getting engaged or starting to plan a wedding. There's this kind of expansive energy with Jupiter entering the house traditionally known or traditionally related to sexuality, love, marriage, relationships, <clears throat> and not just sexual or romantic relationships or marriages, but also your general relationship with the public, your sort of public status. The seventh house was generally a house that pertained to how uh, to other people and the social stratosphere of our lives in general. Jupiter entering that house can mean that teachers are entering your life or that a teaching is entering your life or that it, a deeper and more um, uh, disciplined in Saturn sign, of course, um, adherence to uh, practices or disciplines spiritually, academically are entering your life. It can also mean that the need to share faith with others or with people that you love in your life is pronounced. Um, the, I think what's really interesting is that as the month goes on, Venus is going to go through conjunctions to Saturn and Pluto. That means that there's a deep transformation or um, potential for kind of death and rebirth uh, to take place within romantic relationships, sexually, romantically. Is it easy? No, not with Saturn. It's a maturing moment. It's serious. It's difficult. It's heavy. But the promise with Pluto also being there is it's purgative, healing, and potentially regenerative. People love to take us, you know, really positive twists on everything because we want to avoid everything that's like bad or difficult. But really, um, we should be welcoming it because when things are more challenging, that's often when we take just we just take leaps forward in terms of our spiritual development and our spiritual growth in life. Um, we become better people. We become more of the person that we were born to be when we have to dig in and find the character within ourselves that's capable of responding to adversity. So Jupiter in this house is bringing a lot of growth, but it's bringing it through its fall in the sign of Saturn bringing it through a contractive and maybe somewhat heavy or difficult energy or deeper and heavier and more serious things that are happening right now in general around relationships. Um, it's an expansive energy entering your life though. You're going to, in the year ahead, like the things that your partner is going through, if you have one, or the people coming into your life to teach you something is going to be, you know, um, pretty amazing. It's also a, a great time to, um, literally to meet people who help you become the better version of yourself by offering a more mature, disciplined, or serious understanding. Um, of course, you'd want to be careful of people entering your life that are also too conservative or controlling during this transit, which again lasts a year. Now, again, like the 10th to the 14th, Venus can join Saturn and Pluto. You watch for that emphasis around relationships then. And then around the 20th, you're going to see <clears throat> Jupiter moving into a trine with the planet Uranus. And that, that's nice because, first of all, just Jupiter, Uranus in general brings the kind of breakthroughs. They're just, they're big personal sort of explosive breakthroughs, um, greater freedom, greater independence and expansiveness, all a part of this. But also they can be kind of defiant and rebellious. And you may be trying to redefine your sense of social participation, different groups of people, um, expanding into new social settings or circles, meeting new allies in your life who are really important and start changing you in some dramatic way. This is the meaning of Jupiter's trine to Uranus um, in the 11th house of friends and, and allies and groups of people. So some expansive energy there as well. And then on the 25th into the 26th, the solar eclipse of Jupiter in the 7th house really a lot of newness coming through uh, spouse or partner, marriage, relationships, and other people entering your life in the year ahead. Just very powerful uh, themes there with the relational life. So that's the gist of your reading for the month if you're a Cancer. But there are a few other transits that I have my eye on. 
one of them is being created around the full moon. It's going on all month long, but it's being created around the full moon. And it goes like this. The sun at the, on the seventh in the sixth house in Sag will square Neptune and Pisces. Mercury will enter Sag around the eighth or ninth and then eventually square Neptune around the 20th. Okay, so we've got these two. But then the full moon on the 11th is also um, 11th and into the 12th. Full moon is also opposing and creating a T-square. So you put this all together and you get this kind of T-square energy this month built into the lunar cycle. And between the 6th, 12th, and 9th houses, this is a month of looking very carefully at hardship, adversity, and how it is changing your mind, your heart, or your beliefs. As you are also, you might also be looking at questions of how to implement your beliefs practically in the world. That's a sixth house Sagittarius uh, concern. You might also be trying to figure out how to maintain your own mind and your own thoughts um, especially within relationships where a certain level of conflict or tension is present around the topic of beliefs, religion, spirituality, and so forth. So um, this is a, a good, it's a good month for there to be a change of heart and a change of mind. I think ideological or intellectual tensions would be totally normal, especially as um, within intimate relationships or finding teachers and teachings that you can connect to, but also allowing yourself a, a certain amount of room for doubt that's going to be important. All right. So that's, um, those are the first big couple of groupings of, of transits. And then the last one that I have my eye on is happening right around the 20th, 21st, 22nd, as Venus enters the eighth house and immediately squares Uranus in Taurus. Um, this is interesting because it can really, it can imply something very provocative or something, um, some kind of breakthrough or greater, greater creative or even economic um, uh, like disruption is taking place. Venus in the eighth, square to Uranus in the second, it has to do with the esteem of other people, the wealth of a partner um, and groups of people. And Venus square Uranus wants to take a risk or do something daring or you know, speak out or be defiant or, or, or revolutionize somehow. It could be, for example, that a sparse, a spouse, a sparse, a spouse or partner or someone that you are in love with is doing something unconventional or that they're experiencing some kind of very fortunate level of breakthrough professionally or financially that's sort of freeing them up or is going to be, you know, the long term very liberating for both of you if you're married, for example. On the other hand, you could also see this as something sort of provocative and maybe somewhat scandalous happening around love and relationships or even around finances and money. Um, or the, that your goals or values or dreams or plans are changing or shifting dramatically somehow. Um, you also want to be careful right now. The need for greater independence and freedom in relationships is pronounced. Um, but obviously, with so much emphasis on the seventh house and the Saturnian energy of the seventh house, you're also looking to you know, develop deeper commitments. So defining your commitments, but also breaking free of anything that feels oppressive. Um, you know, those are some maybe general themes that could come along. Uh, with the sequence that Venus is going through from Saturn to Pluto, and then finally a square to Uranus. Anyway, so that's what I've got for you Cancerians. Let's wind this up and start again, but this time let's do it for Scorpios. <clears throat> so at the beginning of the month, if you're a Scorpio rising or Scorpio sun, we're going to see the emphasis on your third house in the month ahead with Jupiter entering your third house house of siblings, brethren, kin, called the joy of the moon, a house that has to do with anything domestic or local that we have ties to through family, culture, community, neighborhood. Um, it's also a house that is has a lot to do with the mind, and it has to do with our um, the different patterns of activity that we um, that flow through us from day to day, especially in our immediate environment. Jupiter moving into this third house, um, it, it certainly suggests that, for example, for the year ahead, there could be um, a way in which your daily routine, your daily practices and pathways, let's say, are getting rewired or redone. You're having to perhaps become a little bit more conservative or to conserve time and energy. You need new structures, new discipline, new order. Um, and you're becoming more mentally defined and hopefully not rigid, be careful of that, but um, more like, you know, just sort of more mature. You're growing up mentally and it's helping you reshape your environment, but ultimately 
reshaping in a Jupiterian way, one that can lead to growth in a greater sense of, of order and wholeness in your life. Jupiter in the third house in its fall can also mean that there are difficult things happening as the month gets going around siblings, um, that there are things, there is growth happening in your life, but it's happening through a contraction in your immediate environment. For example, I remember when I was a kid and we had to move and I had to leave my neighborhood behind. We were going to a new neighborhood. I was very excited, but it was also the difficulty, the stress of moving and the hardship of saying goodbye to people that I was familiar with. So sometimes Jupiter brings growth through the third house, but it's going to come with like more contraction in the immediate environment around you. And this is true, not just now, but for a full year ahead. The other thing is, of course, that Venus is going through conjunctions to Saturn and Pluto in this house, which means that the relationships or the environment around you immediately, the kinds of things that, are, that you're busy with all the time, thinking about people that you're talking to, and just things that define the immediate environment in general, will be going through a process of death and rebirth. We'll be having to get more serious. We'll be having to eliminate things that are no longer helpful or, or necessary. Um, you may see a hard time with things that are very familiar to you, like siblings. The ancient world is a house of brethren and kin. So people who are close to you that share some kind of common bond or root that's very um, central to your life. So d sometimes that's family relationships. That's troubles that your sibling might be having in love or, um, you know, there can be also just the theme of things that are beautiful or clean becoming infected or dirty in the immediate environment with Venus going through conjunctions to Saturn and Pluto, um, but also the regeneration, the reboot, redecorating, um, you know, restoring something to beauty that was damaged or, you know, even like someone who would be fixing up an, a damaged piece of furniture could be going through a transit like this. So um, some, some things there that are, are quite interesting, I think that's between the 10th and the 14th when Venus conjoins Saturn and Pluto. Then, you go forward to the, let's see, the around the 20th, uh, a little before that, Jupiter is going to hit a trine to Uranus in um, Taurus in the seventh house. So this expansive re, kind of redefining energy um, of, of Jupiter in the third, the, the growth that it's trying to bring in, the restructuring, um, it's also activating, you're activating a, a trine to Uranus in the seventh house of love and relationships, which can really awaken a sense that you need to grow or expand or change something due to, you know, some big leaps forward that you're trying to take in a relationship or a way that you're trying to redefine yourself socially, just trying to set better boundaries and uh, come up with more clear cut ways of you know, defining your values, your commitments, etc. And you're doing this with a spouse, with someone you love, or you're just trying to reset how you appear to the world socially. And that you can get a lot of support and help and development and growth can happen really rapidly. But also, again, remember, this is Jupiter and Capricorn. It's a full year. It's a long term project. And it's going to involve the need to kind of get serious and a little weightier, heavier, um, themes around this growth that you're trying to do right now. So there's, there's breakthroughs available. You're trying to recreate yourself in some way right now and re redefine the immediate environment around you. <clears throat> you're going to need the help of other people. And even if you get it, um, it's still going to be a year of having to work slowly, methodically to get where you're going. Um, and sometimes through feelings of, of difficulty. Uh, now, um, these transits form the bulk of your, you know, of what I'm looking at for everybody this month. But the other big transit that I have my eye on for the month is a T-square that's getting created through the lunar cycle. And that is happening um, all month long, but it just sort of peaks at the, um, at the full moon, which is on December 11th into the 12th. On the 7th of the month, the sun will square Mercury, or sun will square Neptune. Mercury will square Neptune on the 20th of the month. On the 11th, there's a full moon in Mercury's sign in Gemini, which means that your eighth, second, and fifth houses are being activated this month. Um, first of all, this is interesting because one of the ways of thinking about the second and eighth houses have to do with uh, the value that we place on things or the things that we have or hold or that are ours or our self sense of self value or worth. And then the eighth house has to do with the value of other people, the esteem of others. And so with the you know, Mercury-Jupiter axis being highlighted with the full moon in Mercury's sign, but Mercury opposite to its own home place being in its detriment, in other words. Um, there is a real tension this month around trying to 
be and hold space for your own thing. This is my own thing, whether it's my own money, my own resources, my own beliefs, ideas, or opinions. And then on the other hand, the pressure that you might be receiving from other people to conform to their values or expectations. Um, you know, for example, this kind of tension is classic when you see people fighting over the rights to something like in a custody case, or when you see people conflicted about who owns what or whose responsibility uh, is whose. Like, I'm responsible for that bill and you're responsible for this one. Or the idea that um, I'm valuable only to the extent that, um, you know, other people like me, need me, find me useful versus feeling self-sufficient. These themes will be really pronounced all month long across your second and eighth house axis with the confusing, hazy, lovely, romantic, charming, uh, you know, uh, pleasing Neptune in the fifth house of, of Venus's joy, the house of good fortune. So this dynamic that we start off talking about around values and money and things like that, responsibilities, dependence versus self-sufficiency, it's complicated by the fact that Neptune is in the fifth house, sort of like you know, the, a house that is traditionally associated with all things that are like pleasing and kind of romantic and sensual and, and nice and fortunate. So sometimes it's very hard to define our boundaries, to stay true to ourself, or to know how much or how little to compromise with other people when we are also, there's some, something very alluring being thrown into the, to the midst. For example, when two people are trying to define these kinds of boundaries and issues around resources or money and relationships, but they both drink or they both have a gambling problem. I mean, these would be really, you know, kind of extreme versions, but, <clears throat> or when they are, you know, entangled with one another sexually to the point where, you know, it's like they, they, they're, even though they have, they have really great intimacy, there's a lot of chemistry. It's, it makes it very difficult to hold good boundaries. So questions about boundaries are also an issue with Neptune here, but also just looking for like a prioritization of values and whether or not someone, like you could see two people fighting about what defines pleasure, happiness, contentment, peace, romance, and people having very different ideas about it if you're a Scorpio uh, rising or a Scorpio sun sign, I think. So those are, that's what I'm looking at for this transit. Now, um, the last transit of the month that comes around is going to be uh, like the 20th, 21st, 22nd of the month um, that I have on my list. And that is Venus entering your fourth house of home and family, immediately squaring Uranus in your seventh house of love and relationships. Again, I get the feeling that there is that you that something is going to be changing. It has to do with a, a conversation about values in a relationship. I, I get that feeling. At least for, I think it's going to represent a good, good portion of Scorpio uh, Scorpio forecast this month. Venus comes through, squares Uranus in the seventh house and says, I've had enough. I'm moving out. I'm getting my own place. Or Venus enters the fourth house, squares Uranus in the seventh and says, let's move in together. But there's some kind of revolution happening relative to relationships and the need to make a statement, do something provocative or dramatic, creative and original, a little disruptive and unplanned or unexpected. Could be breaking out of a relationship or, or getting out of an agreement of some kind, even getting out of a lease. But it also could represent the need to do something in the name of Venus, which might be more about love, harmony, and coming together, but do it in a way that's kind of radical and defiant. And it's also relating back to home, family, roots, and so forth. Okay, so that is what I have for you Scorpios. Let's wind it back one more time and let's do it for Pisces. So <clears throat> Pisces, your month is going to begin with the energy of Capricorn, uh, excuse me, Jupiter entering Capricorn right around the second or third and um, work, working its way into your 11th house, which is the house of friends, colleagues, allies. This was a, a house that referred to the larger community of people that you might share common aspirations with. This is Jupiter's joy in the house of good spirit, a place that is about you know, those that we associate with that bring a larger working whole into our lives. So as that happens, um, the Jupiter entering that house uh, at the beginning of the month suggests new friends, new colleagues, new developments, and also the potential for some losses or big and deep changes around friends and groups of people. Um, 
you know, things might be getting a little bit more serious. They may feel a little bit more adult. You might need a more committed or serious or structured or conservative or traditional group of people to hang around in some way, maybe to hold you accountable, maybe because you're feeling like you're growing up a little bit more. Um, the need to revolutionize your social situation is echoed by the fact that Jupiter is also trining Uranus, planet of liberation, from the 11th house of friends and groups uh, later in the month, right around the winter solstice. We can also see this because Venus is going through conjunctions to Saturn and Pluto between the 10th and like the 14th of the month. Death, rebirth, themes of seriousness, maturity, um, cleansing, purging, healing, regenerating around anything Venusian in the 11th house of friends and groups, love, romance, allies, agreements, and so forth. Um, you could also be looking again for, this could also be about Venus and something that's a little more provocative or unusual or taboo uh, within friends, groups, and so forth. Uh, sometimes it's a breakup. It's like a, a friendship breakup. Um, but other times it's, it's about really getting real around what you need and want from others in the groups that you belong to or the larger social circles that you belong to. Like what kind of social environment are you looking for? Maybe that's changing significantly this month. The other thing is that you also might be just looking to restructure the shape of your life socially because something new is coming forth. And we're going to see this um, repeated by virtue of the solar eclipse that happens on the 25th and the 26th in your 11th house, right? Something really new is coming into your life that's going to change the way that your life is structured socially. Maybe you're moving. Um, maybe it doesn't have to be a transit to the fourth house for a move, but it does turn out that you've got one coming. Yeah, look at this. So uh, if we back up a little bit or go into uh, December 11th, the other big transit of the month is full moon in your fourth house of home, family, and property with uh, T-square energy coming all month long from Sagittarius and Pisces. So let's break that down one by one. The sun will square Neptune on the 7th. Uh, Mercury goes in like around the 8th or 9th into Sagittarius. And then by the 20th also squares Neptune in your ascendant, your first house. Then on the 11th, the full moon in Mercury's sign of Gemini in the fourth house uh, comes through. And its ruler, Mercury, again, will be in the opposite sign, which is in its detriment, creating some real tension. So what does that mean? There is going to be a conversation in your life this month, I think, about um, you know a, a changing scenery in your life that's that is also professional. It's very personal, and it's about your professional direction that you want to go in, long-term future considerations that you're doing, and maybe a certain degree of pressure that you're experiencing around home or family. For example, when a kid's on the way and you think to yourself, our whole life has to change. We've got to think about where to move, what schools to be around, what you know, what kind of environment is best for the kids, da da da, and. But it's also existential. It's like, yeah, but I love my job. I love where I live. I don't want to move. I, I love the block that I live on. I'm so comfortable here. Oh, well, we don't have enough room in the house for the kid. Or you know what I mean? Like we don't, we, we live in a studio apartment or something like that. So this idea that there is tension intellectually, philosophically, um, it's even spiritually in your life right now, it's trying to help you shape your relationship to the future because some big pieces are moving around. And it, it comes down to questions about who am I and what do I serve? What makes me happy? Where do I want to go with my life? And this kind of ideological tension that funnels back down to self-definition. Where am I taking my life? And the choices that you're making right now, they have big social ramifications, but it's also essentially about your, your life direction professionally and, and deeper questions about where your home base or roots are um, or issues pertaining to family karma. So, uh, that's what I've got for you in the first two big transits of the month. And then the last one is right around December 20th to like the 22nd, we're going to see Venus enter into the sign of Aquarius in your 12th house and immediately go through a square to Uranus in your third house. This is interesting. It feels potentially like that the, you have to make some choices socially or even in an intimate relationship. It could be a part of the conversation this month that we're talking about could stem from romantic relationship or um, a, a, a questions that you're having about the rightness of a partnership. And this could be a time where you need to break out of that partnership or that agreement or that relationship with someone. It, it, there's some radical new alternative or possibility. You also want to be careful that you are not um, this is a transit that could have to do with bringing out the worst in yourself in terms of kind of 
defiant and self-destructive behavior in love, sexuality, or relationships. You want to be careful about that. But also just the need to be a little provocative, to do things a little differently, and for there to be some disruption around love and relationships this month uh, would not be, it would not be a big surprise. So, um, you know, when we look at uh, Venus in the 12th house, you think about pain, loss, suffering, shadows in love. You also think about losing our sense of control in love or romantically. You also think about just generally the hurt, the pain, the suffering that also grows us together, melds our hearts closer to one another in love. And then throw in rebellious, unpredictable, erratic, revolutionary Uranus into the picture. Um, so that should shake things up quite nicely, right? Between like the 20th and the 22nd of the month. Um, it's a big month. I, I feel um, excited for um, Pisces, Pisces rising, Pisces sun individuals, because it's not too long that nodes of the moon are going to be shifting signs into your 10th and 4th houses. You're on the press, like 2020 is going to be a huge year for Pisceans because of all of the eclipses coming through these angular houses of career and home. So anyway, that's what I've got for all of you water signs out there. I hope that this was interesting. Next time I see you, it'll be 2020 and it'll be our, our first horoscope of a new year. So I hope you have a, a wonderful holiday season and we will be talking again on the flip side. Take care, everyone. Bye.